Hi and welcome back. This is a simple candle strategy yielding around 75% win rate and 35% in returns during the backtest. Also, the average drawdown is limited to 1.18% and the maximum drawdown of 12.5%. I tested this strategy on multiple assets and around 7 years of data. And the Python code I will be using today is available for download from the link in the description so you can run the simulation yourself and maybe apply your own modifications. The pattern we're looking for is very simple. We'll look for for a candle which low is lower than both its neighbors and the closing price of the last candle in the setup must be higher than the closing price of the middle candle by certain percentage. All of this is easily simulated in Python using just three lines of code with proper conditions. When this setup is detected, we will put a buy order stop at the high of the last candle. If this level is reached during the next session or the next two sessions, then we have an open trade that we will systematically close the very next day after it's opened. So in other words, we let our trades run for one full session. Now this is where you might want to experiment with the code. How long you want to keep an unfulfilled order on the market before cancelling and for how long you want to keep an open trade on the market before closing it. These are some parameters that will highly influence the strategy outcome. For short setups, we just consider the symmetrical configuration where the middle candle high is higher than its neighbors and we put a sell order at the low of the most recent candle. The exit rules are still the same either one or two sessions later and we close the trade. Now let me show you the the code I used for the backtest and we'll go through the results details together. This is our Jupyter Notebook file. I have a set of functions here that we're going to use. So the first one is just to read CSV files and uh, convert these into a data frame, into a pandas data frame. There's also a small cleaning part within the function. Then we have a read data folder that's going to call this previous function and reads all the uh, CSV files within a data folder because we're going to test this on multiple assets. And the function will return a set of data frames or a list of data frames with the list of file names as well. So we know which data frame is for which file name. Now this function here is where the signal is generated as we have described before. So I'm going to comment the second version, which is a modified version of the signal, taking into account the distances between the highs and the lows and so on. But for now, let's stick with the simple version that we've just explained. First of all, we need a first condition where the low of the current candle is greater than the low of the previous candle. And also the low of the previous candle is lower than two candles before. So this is how the uh, previous candle, in other words, is lower than both the current candle and the uh, candle before it. And then we have a third condition where the uh, closing price of the current position minus the uh, closing price of the previous position divided by the closing price of the previous position is greater than 0.005. And that's a difference between the uh, closing price of the last candle and the uh, previous candle. So we need it to be greater than 0.5%. For now, we can change the threshold, as you can see. So it's just a parameter, it's just a constant that you can uh, modify and see how it will influence the results of the strategy. So whenever we have these three conditions, we have long position, uh, that's a long signal we return to, or the function returns to. And then the symmetrical conditions are here, as you can see, and in which case we have a uh, return one. So I'm going to add and C3 here because apparently I forgot to add it. And there we go. So uh, we have three conditions. Then we're going to apply this function to the data frame and adding a new column called total signal. So that's add total signal, it takes a data frame and returns a data frame that's modified with one additional column. And we're also using add point position column. So this function actually is going to generate point positions. Whenever we have a long or a short signal, it's going to position these either above or below the candles just for visualization purposes as you can see here. So whenever we have a long signal, the um, point is positioned below the candle. And whenever we have a short signal, the point is positioned above the candle. So the positions of these points are generated by the function add point position. And we have one more function to plot the uh, candlesticks, the charts with the uh, points where we have long and short signals. And this is it. So I'm going to execute the first cell and then we're going to run the uh, read data folder uh, function. So it's going to read the uh, CSV files, transform these into data frames and provide the names as well. You can see here that we have uh, Australian US dollar, Euro US dollar CSV file, 
New Zealand US dollar, US dollar, Swiss franc, and the US dollar Japanese yen. Now we can loop over all the data frames, run the add total signal function to add the, uh, to generate the signal, bearish and bullish signals. And we're going to add also the point position column for each of these data frames. So the data frames list is going to be modified. We're going to overwrite with the modified data frames. At this point, I'm going to run this, as you can see. So it's going to update the data frames within the list. And just to compute the total sum of the, um, the signals that we have, it's right here. So we have 547 bearish signals and 495 bullish signals in all the data frames. Now we can plot a sample just to make sure that all the functions are working properly and it seems that they are. The high here is higher than both the uh, a future candle or the current candle, the red candle, and the previous candle. The closing price of this candle is below the closing price of the previous candle by a certain percentage. Same thing on the bullish side, we have a low that is lower than two neighbor candles. And then the current candle's closing price is above the high and the closing price of the previous candle. So it's all working well. We can move on to the back test. This is not the strategy I explained in the video. I just kept it here for reference. It's a slightly modified strategy. It uses a stop loss that is a percentage of the price and a take profit that is also a percentage of the price. So I, I just put it here for reference. It's very simple. It's a very simple approach, but you can still run it and see what it gives. We can optimize it. We can optimize these two uh, parameters, the stop loss and take profit distances. And uh, it's going to provide us with the maximum potential of such an indicator. So it's going to fit actually and optimize on past data, but that's okay because it's going to show us what's the maximum result we can uh, expect from such an indicator or such a strategy. So I'm going to put strat one here because that's strategy one and I'm adding commissions. We're considering commissions here and I'm going to run this uh, optimizing the stop loss percentage and the take profit percentage parameters. So let's run the optimization. It takes a few minutes. Okay. And now we can check the aggregated results. So the aggregated returns for all the assets is 96%. It's a positive return, almost uh, 100%. Number of trades is 217. Maximum drawdown is minus 10% and an average drawdown of minus 0.76% and an excellent win rate of 68%. So as you can see, the stats are very good, but don't be fooled. This is just the optimization part. So we need to run this strategy on out of sample data, but this is not the strategy we're focused on on this video. I just left it here again, so you can maybe uh, modify it on your own. They don't want to erase it. Strategy two, this class, strategy two, is the strategy we are focused on in this video. So we, um, we are trading with 20% of the equity. And as we can see, we have an order time. So we're going to put an order on the market. And for this strategy, I defined these functions that we're going to use. So the first one is cancel old orders. This function is going to read all the orders, all the pending orders within the backtest. And if any order is older than two days, it's going to be canceled. We're just keeping the uh, most recent orders. Then we have managed trades. If a trade is opened uh, on the market, so it's an active trade, we're going to check when was it opened and what is the current time using the uh, current index. And if it's a trade that's older, for example, than five days, we simply close it. So we can close it the very next day. So we decrease this to one or two days later or five days later, or also anytime this trade is in positive. So it's, if it's a winning trade at the beginning of a session, we're using the daily time frame. So this is going to be run every day at the beginning of the first session. So if we have a winning trade pending from yesterday or two days before, we simply close it with profits. Then we have a function called handle signals. So whenever we have a bullish signal and we don't have any other open trades on the market, we're going to cancel any pending orders and we put a new buy order because this is a bullish signal. And notice how we used the uh, stop word here, the parameter stop, which is equal to self data dot high. So this is going to put an order or a stop buy order at this price level. So the high of the current candle, the most recent candle. 
So there's no look ahead bias. We're just using past candles and the current candle. We're appending the order time to the list called order time simply because we need to have a reference. How old are the orders on the market? So we can cancel those that are, let's say, uh, older than two or three days. This part is for the bearish signals, exactly the same as the bullish. And then we have cancel all orders. This is going to loop over all pending orders on the market and canceling them. So this is basically all uh, the set of functions that we're going to use. We have five different functions and these are enough to run the strategy. So this is what we're going to use here in the next function within the class strategy two and self cancel orders at the beginning older than two days it's being cancelled then self.manage trades we're going to open trades on the market when we have bullish and bearish uh, signals we have managed trades so if any trade is a winning trade at the beginning of a session or it's an old trade since three or four days it's going to be closed and handle signal is going to put new orders on the market so for strategy two we don't have to optimize the parameters it runs as is all the parameters are within I'm just going to change the uh, these lines of code. So bt.run, backtest.run. We also need to change this strategy to strategy two. And now the aggregated results are in the negative, although we have a very high win rate. So the reason I'm showing you these results is to be aware that some of the uh, videos or some of the documents are advertising that they have a very high win rate. This is the first proof that you can have a very high win rate with negative returns. And what we're interested in are not the win rate. It's not the win rate that uh, that's going to bring uh, money in. It's mainly the uh, the returns. And we need to limit the average drawdown and the maximum maximum drawdown. So in this case, the drawdowns are fair, but the aggregated returns are not very good. We're going to check the equity curves to see how it performs. So the thing is that some of the assets are working well with this strategy. Uh, most of them actually are not. So we just have one that's a winner, I guess. And this is why I actually changed and modified this function. So we're still using the same approach, but instead of this very simple setup, I actually put some limits and thresholds on the differences. So whenever we're testing, if, for example, I don't know, the low is greater than the low of a previous candle, it has to be greater by a certain percentage. It's not enough to be greater by, let's say, one pip. It's very close. It's almost equal. And the same thing, whenever we're testing, if the low of the previous candle is below the low of the candle before it, then also it has to be within a certain percentage or above a certain percentage. The difference has to exceed a certain percentage because a small difference is almost unseen to the eye, but it's actually there and it's going to trigger false signals. So this is why I modified the function to, let's say, include a small threshold above which we are considering these differences. And otherwise, we're simply discarding the signals. And actually, I was getting a lot of negative aggregated returns. The only way to make it run in the positive, to get positive returns, was to, was to use this set of parameters here. We decreased the difference between the closing price of the current candle and the closing price of the previous candle to around 0.1% in both directions. And also for the other differences considered in this strategy to a threshold of 0.1% as well. At the same time, for the trade management part, I keep my orders up to two days on the market. So if they are not fulfilled, and this is right here, and I keep the open trades up to five days on the market until they are profitable. And this is how I got it to somehow work, but it was really hard. So numbers are looking okay-ish. So we have an aggregated returns of 21% and a win rate of 73%. And a very limited drawdown, actually. The average drawdown is minus 1.6%, which is encouraging, and the maximum drawdown of almost minus 12%. So remember that we've used commissions. I've added a small part of commissions, and we can plot the equities. You can see that we have more assets in the positive now, but it's not always working. Somehow it compensates, different assets compensate for each others. Most importantly, that most of the assets are going to the positive. I wouldn't trade this strategy because it was very hard to uh, fine tune to make it profitable. 
And this is not actually what the source claimed. The source claimed that it's very easy to trade and it's always in the positive and so on. But I find it hard to trade and the backtests are not very encouraging to trade this with real money. And that's all I had to tell you for this one. I hope you guys liked it and you're finding this information helpful. Thank you for staying that long and until our next video, trade safe and see you next time. And see you next time.